Hi, welcome to the NFPA Link YouTube channel. This page is dedicated to answering key questions that you have related to electrical and life safety. With easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards, NFPA Link is your window to productivity. Now today, I'm gonna to be talking about allowable water supplies for an NFPA 13D sprinkler system. So let's go ahead and go into Link. So we get to my dashboard in Link and we see here that I have NFPA 13D as one of my favorited standards. And we see NFPA 13 is the standard for the installation of sprinkler systems in one and two family dwellings and manufactured homes. So that is a sprinkler system for uh, for homes in uh, residential occupancies. So think about like a home fire sprinkler system. So the design of these systems are a little bit different than what you might see in an NFPA 13 more commercial fire sprinkler system. So today I'm gonna be talking about the water supplies. So let's go ahead and go into here. And we wanna look for water supplies. We see here chapter six titled water supplies. So we're gonna go into chapter six. I'm going to talk about a few of the requirements in here in chapter six the first one being that we need to have at least one automatic water supply something a little bit different than what you might see in 13 is we're only looking to have a quantity of water for a demand rate of 10 minutes so we're only need a 10 minute water supply for one of these systems and if we meet the requirements in 613 being that we're less than one story in height or we're one story in height and we're less than 2,000 square feet or 185 square meters, we can go down to seven minutes. And that's important when we start talking about some of the allowable water supplies, one of them being a tank and a pump, uh, that, that allows us to have some relatively small tanks to supply these systems. So we're gonna talk about 6.2 here, which is our allowable water supply sources. The first one is connection to a reliable water work system either with or without an automatically operated pump so we can just connect to a domestic water supply to a home so the water line coming in from a municipality we can connect to that we can have an elevated tank that's not that common for these types of systems we could have a pressure tank again that's not really that common to have a pressurized tank um, one of the more common other than a municipal water supply would be a uh, the source of water and an automatically operated pump. So that is basically a tank. And typically they're gonna be in the basement, a small tank and a, an electric pump. And it's important to note here that NFPA 13D does not require that the tank or the pump be listed or meet the requirements in NFPA 20 or NFPA 22. So that's important that we can use sort of more uh, uh, less expensive options for water supplies we don't have to necessarily go for listed options so that's a, a fairly common option for supplying these systems and then finally we could have a well with a pump and as long as that well pump has enough capacity to meet the sprinkler system and then also on top of that the electric pumps for either the tank or the well neither of those need to be provided with any type of backup power so that's important to note there they can just be fed off of the the utility power coming into the home. So I hope that provided some insight into the allowable water supplies for an NFPA 13D sprinkler system. Again, it's a bit different than what you might be familiar with if you're familiar with an NFPA 13 sprinkler system on more commercial type buildings. If you wanna learn more about how NFPA Link can give you the knowledge that you need to get the job done right, go ahead and visit nfpa.org link.